East Mizoram, Nagaland, and Kerala passed resolution to oppose uniform civil code without seeing the contents of the bills. Why not in Meghalaya? Why not in Meghalaya? What is the problem? Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move that this House do now resolve to oppose the implementation of the Uniform Civil Code in the state. Motion moved. Now you may initiate the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for allowing me to move this very important resolution. Mr. Speaker, sir, why I bring this resolution before this August House? The reason is that I had a vision if this uniform civil code is implemented or being operated fully as an act, then it will, it will have major impact on the interests of the minorities and the state as a whole. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm very happy that during the summer session, the Kassils Autonomous District Council and the Gentle Hills Autonomous District Council passes resolution to oppose uniform civil code in order to safeguard, to protect the interests of the indigenous people as provided under the section of Indian Constitution. Mr. Speaker, sir, if uniform civil code is implemented, then it will affect the sixth schedule of the Constitution of India. If UCC, uniform civil code, is implemented, it also will affect the lawmaking power of the District Council as, as per Para 3A mentioned that the District Council has power to make law on land. Number two, power to make law on inheritance property. And number three, marriage and divorce. And number four, the social custom. Mr. Speaker, sir, if uniform civil code came into, it will affect all the lawmaking of the district council and might be diluted. And hence, the power of the district council will be greatly affected. Mr. Speaker, sir, it will definitely have an impact on the traditional custom and usage of the indigenous people of the state of Meghalaya. The indigenous people, be it Khasis, Jantias, and Garos, has their own custom and traditional on marriage has their own traditional inheritance property. Marriage and divorce, succession, adoption, guardianship, etc. that are still strictly followed till then. 
the custom and tradition is one of the unique identity of any particular tribe in the state of Meghalaya. But sir, all this custom and tradition will be diluted and slowly it will disappear as a result of the uniform civil code came into. Mr. Chairman, sir, moreover, what is more sensitive to the sentiment of the people if uniform civil court might affect the religious ceremonies followed by different religions. For example, the Christian communities from various denominations followed the Christian Marriage Act whereby under this act the pastors, priests, elders are fully empowered by the district council to be the marriage license holder. Mr. Chairman, sir, if uniform civil code came into effect, the power will be taken away and the magistrate, the magistrate or the officers of the state will be the only license or license holders or register holder. Mr. Chairman, sir, the sacramental aspect of marriage in the Christian community also will be diluted. Mr. Chairman, sir, I am afraid that family breakdown will increase day by day. And it will have, it will have huge impact in the society. Mr. Chairman, sir, the National Law Commission, after taking the public consultation, the report was submitted in the year 2018, and it has clearly stated that the Uniform Civil Court is not needed. Mr. Chairman, sir, I personally, as a legislator, and one of the leaders of the state, I feel that we should be more aware of the impact of the Uniform Civil Court, where private members bill were being brought in the Raja Sabha and Lok Sabha. Henceforth, I henceforth call upon the interests of all of us to reject the Uniform Civil Code as it is not needed in a bill of state. I'm very happy to see that our Chief Minister, Honorable Chief Minister, in the last few months, he has stated that Uniform Civil Code goes against India's identity. I hope that our Honorable Chief Minister Give his word on this matter. Mr. Chairman, sir, 
some of my friends asking me, why you move this resolution? Since they have not yet tabled in parliament and not yet passed the bill. Mr. Chairman, sir, prevention is better than cure. I'm happy to see that in Mizoram, in Kerala, and also in the state of Nagaland, they have already passed a resolution against the implement, implementation of uniform civil code. The question is, why not in our state, Meghalaya? Mr. Chairman, sir, once again, I request to all of us, as the members of this August House, as the responsibility leaders of the state, I request to all of us, let us unite. Let us stand together and let us pass a resolution to oppose the implementation of the Uniform Civil Code in our state. And also, let our state government urge the union government for exemption of implementation of uniform civil code in our beloved state. Mr. Chairman, sir, I hope and I believe if the government of Megalia pass a resolution to oppose the implementation of UCC, Uniform Civil Code, it will be a blessing for our state. It will protect the interests of the minorities and indigenous people in our state. Mr. Chairman, sir, I will not take much time. With these few words, I once again request to all the members, let us unite and let us stand together and let us pass a resolution to oppose the Uniform Civil Court, implementation of Uniform Civil, Civil Court. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you, Chairman, sir. I also rise to support the, this resolution brought in by Honorable Member from Mohati. That this House do now resolve to oppose the implementation of the Uniform Civil Code in the state. Our country has a very unique identity. And that uniqueness comes from the diversity that we have in this nation. Now, honorable members uh, from Mohati and uh, honorable member from Nong Thamai before me, while discussing on this resolution, have spoken about all the details of how it can affect the peace of the country and how it can even bring conflict. I also have the same thoughts. Now, this, uh, this Uniform Civil Code has not been passed, but 
it has been brought to our notice that it may be passed in the near future. Therefore, I think it is very necessary for the members of this Honourable August House uh, to understand what it will bring for us as citizens of the country. We all know that Meghalaya is a very diverse state. We have different communities. If we look at ourselves in comparison with the entire uh, different communities of the country, we see that we are a minority. And we are also a Christian majority state. Now, having said that, we know that even though we are a Christian state, we have different ethnic minorities within the state of Meghalaya. And I think it is only right for us to anticipate what these kind of laws might bring in the near future. So therefore, sir, I think the respect for the diverse community is the glue to the nation. So I will not go into the deep discussion since already other members have spoken about it. But I do believe that the government of the day, in fact, should adopt this resolution like the other state assemblies in uh, the state of Mizoram and Nagaland and Kerala have adopted opposing a resolution opposing to the Uniform Civil Court. So, therefore, I completely agree with the Honourable Member who has brought this resolution and I support and with these few submissions, I resume my seat. Thank you. I also stand to support the resolution brought in by the Honourable Member Charles Marangar, MLA, that this House do now resolve to impose, oppose the implementation of the Uniform Civil Code in the state. So the Uniform Civil Code, or in short the UCC, is a concept that proposes the unification of personal laws across all religions in a country, in a country. In India, where diverse religions, religious and cultural pr practices coexist, implementing a UCC has been a topic of considerable debate and discussion. But, however, let us consider the pros and cons of the UCC in terms of addressing the debate. What are the pros and cons? I will go straight to the disadvantages. So the threat to minority rights. Opponents of the UCC argue that it could undermine the rights of religious minorities, as it might seek to impose a uniform set of laws on diverse religious communities. So India's cultural and religious diversity is a fundamental aspect of its identity, identity and some argue that the UCC could erode this diversity and infringe upon the rights of minority communities to practice their faith and follow their customs. So point number two is the cultural sensitivity and identity. India's social fabric is woven with diverse cultural practices and traditions which are often intertwined with religion. Implementing a UCC could be seen as a threat to this cultural sensitivity and individual identity, as it might require some individuals to confirm to a uniform legal framework that may not align with their cultural practices and beliefs. So there are another the challenges of implementation, sir. 
how do you implement a UCS in India, where present significant challenges due to the country's vast population and diversity? See, these are potential logistical hurdles would make the implementation process complex and time consuming. Another disadvantage, which is very important to note, is the potential for social unrest. The potential for social unrest. <clears throat> Given the deep-rooted religious and cultural sensitivities in India, the introduction of UCC could potentially trigger social unrest and conflicts. Opponents argue that attempts to oppose a uniform set of laws could be perceived as an encroachment on religious freedom and lead to polarization and communal tensions. So to in conclusion, sir, I want to add now that since this is such a complex and contentious issue, while a UCC holds the promise of promoting equality, social justice, and national integration, its potential disadvantages include threat to minority rights, which I mentioned earlier. Any attempt to implement a UCC should involve extensive consultation, consensus building, and an emphasis on safeguarding the principles of secularism, diversity, and individual rights. Therefore, so ultimately, striking a balance between uniformity and diversity is essential for any meaningful progress towards a more just and inclusive legal system in India. So with these few words, I conclude by supporting the resolution raised, moved by the move of Charles Mann. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir. I also rise to support the Resolution brought by Honorable Member from Mauhati, Charles Marga. Sir, I think we all know that India has existed for more than 75 years with all its diversity. So if the country has been able to progress, has been able to remain stable, in spite of all the diversity, diversity in be it religion, be it uh, language, be it the caste, the creed, I think, sir, we have to oppose this UCC from this August House because it's going to affect the tribal way of life, it's going to tri affect the tribal population the most because we have our own unique culture, we have our own unique customary laws, we have our own unique inheritance, then marriage, divorce, and all that, sir. And I think the most affected will be the state of Meghalaya because we follow a matrilineal system, all the three major tribes of the state. Yes, sir, though the India government has not come up with any plan or how they're going to implement the UCC. But what we are afraid of, sir, suddenly if it is, it is you know, passed in the parliament, then we're going to face the brunt of this uniform civil court. Like I said, sir, uh, I think what is required more, rather than uniform, sir, we need to have a reform. A reform to ensure you know, gender equality. I think that is more important. And then, uh, you know, in, in fact, uh, improve upon the customary laws and usages of the tribal community. And uh, what the Constitution has been guaranteeing to us, that should be protected. Because if you have the Uniform Civil Court, sir, what will be the impact on the six schedule of the Constitution? Once that is affected, sir, I think practically the tribal way of life, the tribal, uh, everything will be affected. So, sir, uh, I also support this resolution because we feel that UCC is not at this time uh, 
desirable. In fact, the 21st Law Commission had said it is not desirable at this time. And in fact, said the Constitution, there is nothing that says that within a stipulated period, this Uniform Civil Code should be implemented. So if the 21st Law Commission has you know, expressed explicitly it is not desirable now, I don't know what is the need now to bring this Uniform Civil Code. Sir. So well, I don't have much to say, sir, because other members have already deliberated upon this point. I also uh, resume my seat, sir, by again stressing, emphasizing that this House we have to oppose the Uniform Civil Code, taking into consideration the future, the everything of the state of Meghalaya and our beloved people of this state. With this few words, sir, I resume my seat. Thank you. Thank you. Sri uh, Deputy Speaker, sir. I rise, I also rise to take part in this uh, resolution brought by Honorable Member Emily from uh, Mahate Vachas Marnar <laughs> to oppose, to strongly oppose the implementation of the uni uh, Uniform Civil Court uh, in the state. Sir, before I start, I would like to remind all of us that we are a very microscopic population in the mainstream of India. Let's not forget the fact. Therefore, it is a call for each and every one of us that let's stand unitedly. I appreciate the Honorable Chief Minister who had make his uh, stand to oppose. How much more if we can uh, bring this issue of UCC, Uniform Civil Court, in a form of resolution. If we could pass in this August House unanimously, that will be much, much better. Let's not afraid to speak the truth. We clearly understand the hidden agenda of the BGP Art Center. Uniform Civil Court is a long political ideology of the BGP to strengthen its root for vote bank politics across the majority Hindi well, regions of the country. UCC, I fear, will have a direct impact on our autonomous council, as what the mover had mentioned and reiterate the same. Where, uh, and also our social and customary practices. Because, unlike Mizoram and Nagaland, where they have Article 3721A and G, respectively, whether Legislative Assembly can have a veto power. Any act of Parliament that is in conflict with the social customary practices of the Nagas and Mizo, six schedules does not provide such power to the District Council as such. Sir, I will not take much of every one precious time in this very Agus House. It is a very vital issue which brought by one of our honourable member. Therefore, I urge the House to pass a resolution against UCC because now it's UCC. No doubt about that. Who knows, next they will push for one nation, one religion, and one language. Sir, as I always believe, not in words, but in action, these very few words, I make my submission to stand opposed to the move of the central government for implementation of uniform civil court.
in the state. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. I would like to participate uh, in the resolution brought by Charles Bangner, MLA. This House now uh, resolved to oppose the implementations of the Uniform Civil Court. Mr. Speaker, sir, to you, we don't know what are the contents that has laid in the UCC till that. But uh, my fear is that, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, passionately realism and passionately <laughs> anyway, uh, compromises without which idealism is impossible. What I have learned in my political career, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that we can argue passionately for the modernizations, passionately for the realism, for the realism that compromise without which the idealism is impossible. But what I'm feeling now what is I'm really feel deeply denial of the central fact, very reluctant false visions of the future, economic danger and risk, perhaps maybe soft power. The third referendum that might embrace the benevolent of our country. What I'm worried about is the following. It's, it is not just to express the differences, but in a dangerous sense. The, they intensify indifference by converting them to take their own, you never know, the religion or own system. Therefore, there might be a nastiness in the politics, Mr. Speaker, sir. The moderations that they are compromising, they are trying to compromise, ultimately in realism, we might not try to get as much as what we fear. Now, nowadays, I am seeing, especially even in the MGNSC sector, we are a Christian state, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> we are a Christian state. But yet, on the day of our holiday, Sunday, the MGNSC was supposed to be only 30 days of Mendes, I mean, 100 days of Mendes, which was supposed to be covered. But without Sunday, we could have covered. But now itself, the central government is pressing us that even on Sunday also, you have to take the photo and then give it. Now itself they are suppressing. That day, also Mr. Speaker, sir, in our CPA meeting, which was held on Sunday, because of Sunday I didn't come. It doesn't mean that I don't want to come. But since it was held on Sunday, I do not want to compromise, not because I'm a holy, but at least I have to respect the sentiments and the emotions of the Christian. Now itself, they are trying to press us. Everything, it seems like they are trying to do it on Sunday, Holy Day. What? The one of the saddest part is that even on Christmas, they started taking a picture for the wages. Somewhere in Rongjeng side. So, I would like to impress upon our government, at least being the Christian state, we should restrict Sunday even on taking the pictures for the wages. We can cover 100 mandates because we have got 365 days. Not necessarily that you have to take a picture on Sunday. So these are the areas that I'm scared, Mr. Speaker. Sir. By chance, if they pass, what would happen? Happen? What will happen to us? Such civility, this is the only civility where the important issues can be discussed. I lazily assume despite the superficial differences between the ruling and the opposition, but reflecting upon issues, it's too prejudiced. In reality, using the rules and the framework of the constitution, being the legislator, I would like to speak, help, uh, you know, help upon the government right now. We should remain, we should not remain exciting about any kind of any kind of, uh, you know, uh, act or any kind of uh, issues that is being passed by the center. We should check and balance. We should not be cowardly incompetent enough, which will profoundly diminish us, our sectorial. Democratic government reflects their own people, respect the neighbor, free from well-being, 
peace, democracy would bring us properly security, overcome sectorial violence, ensure that the state will not harbor those which we don't need. Mr. Speaker, sir, the idea of democracy is equality. Liberty reflects the idea of dignity and dignity of every individual and dignity of every religion. Democracy should not be inter instrument. It's not, it, it is not about the things. It should not prosperous, effective, rule of law. It doesn't guarantee for the next 100 years. Point out about the democracy is intrinsic. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, I am totally against, and we are all totally against, and I believe, not only from the opposition, even from the Treasury also, we should be all be against. We should be worrying about what will happen if the UCC is placed before the, you know, uh, if it is placed before the legislature. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, since everybody has spoken, all their ideas and views, I don't want to dodge here and there, but would like to request that we should send a clear message that the Meghalaya being the Christian state, we should not be, you know, uh, we should not be succumbing to any kind of rule of law that they will be passing every now and then. We are a diverse county, we should respect each and every, uh, everybody and which, each and every tribe, each and every community, each and every religion. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I, Mr. <coughs> Speaker, sir, I was raised to oppose uh, the implementation of uniform school code in the state as moved by, by Charles Malna and Nay from Mohati. Sir, before I go into it, I uh, would like to inform you, sir, that uh, we, as the party, voice of the political party, have written a letter to the Law Commission expressing uh, the concern and disapproval of the of this, uh, this implementation of uh, this uh, UCC in the state. So, sir, so I want to share something that I also oppose implementation of uniforms we put in a diverse state like Mechania, which is the home to various indigenous communities and cultures which can present the specific challenges and drawbacks. So some, some of the drawbacks uh, I would like to share here, sir. First one is cultural diversity. Meklia is known for its rich uh, uh, cultural diversity. So, so we have, uh, we have Khasi, Chantia, Agaros. So we have our own unique customs and traditions. So implementing of UCC may be seen as a threat to these diverse cultural practices, so, potentially leading to resistance and social unrest. Second point, sir, on the indigenous rights. And many in indigenous communities in Mikina, Khasi, Karos, and Chaitias, we have special legal protections and rights guaranteed under tribal laws and customary practice. So, sir, implementing this UCC might inter undermine this right and autonomy of our indigenous institutions. Another point, sir, when you come to uh, custom laws, uh, in many of our indigenous communities in Mikhaila, sir, this custom law plays a crucial role in matters like ownership, inheritance, and marriage. So UCC could conflict these custom laws leading to confusions and disputes. Another point, sir, briefly, on the religious diversity. Mikhaila is home to many religions, especially Christians, and so followers of indigenous uh, 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 tribal religions. So if UCC is implemented, sir, it could, it could impact their religious practices and beliefs leading to tensions and conflicts. So another point, lack of consensus. So there will be no consensus at all, sir, if the government implementing UCC in Kenya. We may face challenges in achieving consensus among our communities and states groups. 
So without sufficient buy-in from the local population, it may lead to resistance and protest. So on gender equality concerns, while the proponents uh, argue that UCC can promote gender equality, it is essential to consider whether it adequately addresses the specific needs and concern of our women in our diverse communities. So on the point, there will be potential for social unrest, given the sensitivity of cultural and religious issues. So implementing UCC, sir, what are addressing the concerns and expectations of the local population could potentially lead to social unrest and divisions. Uh, lastly, sir, there will be an impact on minority communities. Minorities, communities in Mekina might feel marginalized and and disadvantaged by UCC, which could lead to a sense of alienation and discrimination, sir. So I would like to quote from what our Honorable Chimster said uh, in the Times of India, Mignaya CM opposes uniforms and quote, fierce negative impact on tribal culture. So I appreciate our Honorable Chimster for opposing UCC. So, uh, sir, I, lastly, sir, I, it is crucial for coming to the to uh, carefully consider these drawbacks and challenges. And I requested the government of the day to engage extensive consultations with local communities, religious leaders, and the local experts. With these few words, sir, I assume a seat. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I rise to support the uh, the resolution moved by honorable member from Mohati by Charles Marmar. The text of the resolution is that this House do now resolve to oppose the implementation of the uniform civil court in the state. We are all aware of this development that has unfolded across the nation. Mr. Speaker, sir. Every political party, whether regional or national, every political party has made its position very, very clear, abundantly clear on this very important issue. And it's only appropriate that uh, every political party has definitely articulated in the right harness. And therefore, to make the long story short, it will be only befitting for the state to reflect the unanimous resolve <coughs> to indicate our stand on the issue. The, this August House provides this platform, a platform which is capable of indicating that this is a voice a collective voice which is appropriately being articulated. So it will be in the fitness of things that we all take rather advantage of this situation that we are here together today in this August House. And one of the members have rightly tabled this resolution. We all are aware of our own respective stance as political parties. We all are aware. But what is important is that when we articulate it as a collective resolve to represent the voice of the people, because each one of us are actually representing the voice of our people, and indirectly not only representing the voice of the people of the state of Meghalaya, but also the brethren who form part of this great nation, who are equally as microscopic as us in terms of population. And we all are aware that we are the source of strength to this great nation from the huge diversity that we make. We contribute to this diversity, and this diversity actually is the 
inherent strength of this great nation. Therefore, <coughs> I'm sure uh, the policy makers, the different leaders of different political parties from across the nation, who have their representative in both the houses of the parliament, will be able to understand, understand the sentiments which start echoing from all parts of the country, representing all of us, including, including the people of the state of Meghalaya. So through you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I will only submit and pray that let this particular uh, issue be adopted as a part of the resolution. We have done it so in the past. When we looked at the necessity to come together to adopt a resolution in this August House, keeping in mind the changed circumstances vis a vis <coughs> the felt need to have the introduction of ILP, we did, we did come together at that point of time. We did take an unanimous decision and adopted a resolution here. Therefore, uh, there is unanimity in this regard. There is no lack of unanimity. And therefore, I will only uh, submit before this August House through you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, to prevail upon the government to adopt a resolution. If you can adopt this resolution or the government can come up with a special resolution and adopt it. Let this whole collective voice be appropriately articulated. And uh, I'm also uh, concerned because uh, now <clears throat> ADCs, Autonomous District Councils, I think some involvement of these very crucial institutions need to be also taken on board. I was uh, reading at the uh, news items carried, reflecting their concerns. I think it is only appropriate that they should be taken on board. Let them be able to, they already have done so, but then I think there should be, there should be uh, a kind of uh, uh, gesture where uh, this whole taking everybody into the loop to really reflect the unanimity of our voice, collective voice. So this is my humble submission, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I am sure the government has taken cognizance of this feeling. This feeling is palpable not only across our state, but across the nation. So we are to go as per the aspirations and expectations of the people. We are here only on behalf of the people, and we only articulate the voice on their behalf. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Because, sir, at the very outset, I would like to thank uh, the Honourable Member from uh, Mauhati, the Honourable Member from Nongtumai, the Honourable Member from Ampatti, the Honourable Member from Milem, the Honourable Member from North Shillong, the Honourable Member from Gambigri, and the Honourable Member from Songsat, constituency for having uh, brought this resolution and participated in this resolution which is to resolve to oppose the implementation of the uniform civil code in the states. Sir, when uh, this discussion had started in the country recently, it's been going on for some time, in the past also it has been there. but. Just in the recent past, when the debate once again started, I was asked by many press uh, people that what is your stand? And as has been quoted by one of the members, I'm sorry, our member from uh, uh, Morankaneng also had participated. Uh, when, uh, as mentioned, when the press asked me, I said that as a concept and as a, you know, a proposal, the Uniform Civil Code is something that is not acceptable to us. Because we are a diverse nation 
and in the diversity lies our strength. And hence the idea or the concept of a uniform civil code is not acceptable to us. And that has been the stand that I have given as the Chief Minister of the State as well as the President of my political party. And hence, sir, let there be no doubt that when it comes to looking at the UCC and the possibility of it coming as a bill and then the possibility of it being passed, we as a state, as a government and as political parties, we are all very much against this concept or this idea of a UCC. But having said that, the question arises that can we as legislators today specifically oppose or pass a resolution without knowing the content of the bill? Our stand outside the House can be on the ideas that we have, we can speak without any documentation, we can speak based on what we presume may happen, we can speak on the basis of uh, what we think may happen and uh, it's not something that we'll be responsible because it's outside in the, in the, in the, uh, in the public uh, domain. Uh, of course, public will judge us, but uh, it is not something that will be uh, in the House. But as legislatures today, if we are to oppose a particular bill or propose, oppose the UCC, the first thing we need to have in front of us is the UCC bill itself. Now, I don't know, I, I, maybe some of the members have seen the bill, but I have not seen the UCC bill. I have no idea what the UCC bill has. I don't even know whether it mentions that tribals will be protected or tribals will be exempted. I don't know. Or that the state of Meghalaya will be exempted, Northeast will be exempted, or it will only apply to a particular society. So therefore, without having the actual bill in front of us, as legislatures and without going through the content of what the bill intends to do, it really will not be appropriate for us at this point in time to pass a resolution simply because we don't know or there is no bill, there is nothing that has been moved. Yes, there is a fear, no doubt. Yes, there are apprehensions. Yes, there are concerns. And of course, if all the points that have been mentioned by the honorable members is going to be a part, which we have no idea whether it will or it will not, if it's going to be, then of course, the whole state and this whole house will stand united and ensure that we will pass the resolution. But as I said, outside the house, we are free to act and speak and give all our opinions based on what we think about this issue and, and come with our stand as political parties, as individuals, as political leaders and give the statements in the press. But when it comes to actual passing of a resolution, specifics, which particular uh, para, which particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, which particular section of the bill, which particular concept of the bill, or which particular idea, as legislatures at the end of the day, it is necessary for us to be able to go through that and come uh, then pass a resolution based on uh, what was going to be in the bill. Therefore, sir, we have debated about this. In fact, I would like to share that a large number of the MDA partners, uh, our honorable member from uh, Jirang and other members uh, from different constituencies, we discuss about this in the MDA meeting just before the, uh, before the assembly session. And we discuss in detail for a long time on how we should proceed with this idea. And all of us have then come to the conclusion that yes, as a concept and as an idea, the UCC goes against the entire idea of India, which is the diversity. And uh, yes, we oppose the overall uh, idea of UCC, but as legislatures, it is only when we see the draft of the bill 
then only will we be able to take a stand on what are the aspects uh, that are going to be there. Therefore, the question arises whether we are going to stand, are we going to be against the dilution of any kind of rights of the tribals? Yes, of course. If there is anything in the bill that is going to touch or dilute the cultural and the religious practices of the tribals and indigenous people of our region, this government, the MDA government, and I'm sure this entire house is going to oppose that particular move, sir. So therefore, let there be no doubt that we are completely united when it comes to any kind of move by anybody, including the parliament, when it comes to a point where there are laws that may be brought to dilute our rights and our principles and our culture or our practices, this house will stand united to oppose that. But till the point where we are not able to see what it is, whether in fact there is no bill that has been brought, forget the idea of passing it. A lot of members said that, what if this is passed? My question is, what is passed? There's nothing. They, they say that, well, uh, there will be, you know, what, what if they're trying to dilute it? Well, I don't know whether we can just simply go ahead and on a, a presumption that these kind of things may happen, that we will just simply go ahead based on a concept or an idea without really looking into the bill. Sir, that would uh, not be appropriate uh, process for the House to follow. But as I said, if the bill, whenever and as and when it comes, which we don't have any idea about, this has just been talked in the media, in, the, in this come out, many questions have been asked to me, to many of our leaders, until unless we don't see what's uh, the copy of the bill, uh, it will be very, very difficult for us to comment in that line. Therefore, sir, I would like to not take too much of time, but I would like to conclude here by just simply saying three things which I have already elaborated. The first, sir, uh, is that as a concept and as an idea, uh, the UCC goes against the entire idea of India, which is the diversity. And hence, as a concept, it is not something that uh, any of us can agree to. Number two, if there is any proposal or any bill that is brought in to dilute the rights of the tribals or dilute the practices of the tribals and the indigenous people and the religious practices of our people or the different kind of marriage and inheritance laws that is going to affect our state and our people, the government and the assembly and I'm sure all the members of this house will never agree to it. But the question is, the bill has not even been bought, brought, there is no draft of it, there is no documentation of it and the question of it coming in parliament or Lok Sabha being introduced is completely uh, uh, ambiguous right now and there is no such move and hence uh, as and when that comes, uh, that's the only time when we can actually comment on uh, what's the bill going to be and how the stand of the government will be. So I also would like to update the House that the Law Commission has asked for the uh, inputs of the state government and uh, we have already fixed a time where the cabinet will uh, go through the suggestions that have been made but I can share uh, to all of you that it will be in line with what I have already mentioned to you that if there is any move to dilute any of our practices, the government and the state will oppose uh, that particular move will be the stand and therefore details of that are there but uh, I will refrain from going into all of it, it's quite lengthy but uh, that will be the crux of uh, the suggestions that will go to the Law Commission and, um, and therefore sir, uh, with these few words as I said, I respect the concerns, I respect the sentiments of all the members and let me assure you, I share the same sentiments. And therefore, there is, let there be no doubt that we are all on the same page. But proper procedures and legislative procedures need to be followed for us to be able to move a resolution on a subject like these, the details of the entire resolution and the details of all the bills that will come up will be needed. Simply because sir, we, as I said, if the bill tomorrow, I have been saying it in a, on, a, on a lighter note, I don't mean to say it on a serious uh, note, but I'm just presuming, suppose I could presume that we write to the Law Commission and say that 33% uh, reservation has been given to women or is planned to be given to women uh, in, uh, the, in the House and therefore we, we uh, recommend that, uh, uh, that the real empowerment of women can only come 
with also uh, uh, making India a matrilineal society tomorrow. And in a very, very low probability, the government of India, say for example, does accept that proposal of, uh, of ours and says that yes, from tomorrow, whole of India is going to be a matrilineal country. I think we will not oppose that UCC. So therefore, it depends on what is going to be there in that content. I, I can presume it will be there, it will not be there, you can presume something else, but I guess we, uh, I, sorry, not guess, we cannot move forward uh, by going forward as a legislature to uh, move in terms of what we presume may happen and pass a resolution on presumption that that was going to uh, that thing. But of course, outside the House, uh, we have all expressed, and let me reiterate, that we are all united in opposition to any kind of dilution or any law that will come in to dilute the rights and the cultural practices of the indigenous people and of the people in st of and different communities who reside in the state of Meghalaya. Sir. So with these uh, few uh, clarifications, sir, I would request the honorable member, uh, since I've clarified in length, at length, uh, I would request the honorable member if he could uh, withdraw the resolution. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, <clears throat> may I know the mind of the honourable member who has, who has moved this resolution? Will he withdraw or not? Can I say a few words, sir? Yes, you may seek some clarification. Mr. Speaker, sir, <clears throat> I would like to thank to all the members who participated in my resolution and especially to the Honourable Chief Minister. And I also thank that he also, he, as he stated for the last few months that we have seen in the social media, that he also said that uh, UCC goes against India's identity. And now also he has stated that is very concerned about the implementation of the UCC. Yes, sir, we have not seen the contents of the bills. I agree with the Honorable Chief Minister. Some of my friends asking me, by chance, why you are talking about the UCC? Since the UCC has not been, you know, tabled in the in Parliament or passed the bill. Mr. So Speaker, sir, I told my friends, if there is a, a bus driver, you are, a, suppose you are a bus contact, conductor, you will tell him, if you want to turn a bus, you will tell him, come, come, come. In Kasi, we say one, one. I ask him, you will stop the bus till the bus got an accident? He said, no. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker sir, as we are here as responsible leaders, as I have said before, prevention is better than cure. If Mizoram, Nagaland and Kerala pass resolution to oppose uniform civil code without seeing the contents of the bills, why not in Meghalaya? Why not in Meghalaya? What is the problem? to pass a resolution. Mr. Speaker, sir, once again, with due respect to the Honorable Chief Minister, I also want to know what is the mind, mind of the government? What is the mind of the government? Suppose, if the UCC is going to be passed in our country. 
that is my uh, question to the honorable chief minister sir sir uh, i have already replied sir that uh, if the contents of the bill as and when it comes out once we go through it and it goes against the rights of the tribals so we have already mentioned that we are united and we will oppose that my only question to the honorable member is he said that what if the ucc is brought in this past uh, my question to him again is can you please tell me what is in the ucc what is it that is going to be passed in parliament please tell me and i'll give you an answer whether we will support it or not if the ucc bill has matrilineal system that will be adopted by the whole country from future parliament passes that as ucc i think all of us will support that bill that says that from tomorrow india is going to be a matrilineal society so i don't know what the bill is so do what do i do do i support or not support sir so as legislatures there is a way and the process of doing things outside the house so we have already given our stand and made our political messaging to the government of india and to everybody clear but when we are in the house so because somebody else does something doesn't mean we don't follow the process and the procedure for us to be able to act as responsible uh, legislatures we need the content of the bill to know what is it going to be and the question also arises that whether this content is already there or not we have nobody has seen it nobody knows what it is because it's not there so on a fictitious and a, a, a situation where we are thinking what may happen and where we don't even know what if tomorrow as i said the bill contains the uh, the point uh, that is going to become a matrilineal country we will be the first people to say what did we do we should have never passed this uh, this particular resolution without actually seeing the content therefore sir let me be again very clear no doubt that uniform civil code is a concept that we will agree to <clears throat> i'm sorry uh, it is now 2 o'clock um, so i will uh, extend the house uh, till 3 pm uh on the which means you may continue please so so therefore if the uh, uniform civil code as i mentioned tomorrow comes out and suppose there is a particular provision that says that the matrilineal system will be followed and suppose all other factors that are already there which we agree to and as a, as a legislature we all find that there's no uh, harm in it to our people and if we are completely exempted from all the aspects and of course discussion will be made on that aspect and then accordingly we will decide sir but today as i said prematurely without even knowing what is in the content just because another state has done it that doesn't make us also you know follow that and say that we will also have to do it we have to think we have to apply our minds we have to understand the procedure that should be followed we have to realize what we are opposing what resolution we bringing in for what we are going to be bringing a resolution today against a concept an idea which idea which will have to be implemented and given in detail which we have no clue about what is the uniform civil code or going to be on is it going to be on marriage is it going to be on uh, inheritance is it going to be well that's what the concept says but we don't know what the bill says so till we don't see that how to oppose something which we don't know what it is that is what we are trying to say sir so there's a time for everything have we made our stand clear we have in the public domain and the in the press we have already said we are against it if it dilutes us and dilutes our practices we are against it but when it comes to passing a resolution the procedure and the process has to be followed we need to see what is it that we are opposing should not be the case that tomorrow we look at the bill and we say well there's nothing to oppose i'm just saying we only will come to know when we see the bill maybe it's everything is to be opposed well then we will oppose it that time but therefore sir all i'm trying to say is that don't take my statement of uh, not supporting this resolution as my stand on this uh, concept my stand and the government stand is very clear as i said we oppose the ucc we oppose the entire concept of ucc and any move to dilute our practices the question arises 
passing a resolution has to be based on facts, figures, bills, details, acts, acts well when it's passed, then only can we comment. That's what I'm trying to say, sir. So is the issue important? It is absolutely important. Are we united? Absolutely we are. Are we against it? Yes, we are, as an idea and a concept. But till we don't see the details of the bill, it will be futile for us to speak about it because it's not even there, is what I'm trying to say, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, sir, yes. once again, I would like to thank to the Chief Minister for the reply. And since an Honorable Chief Minister had clearly stated that he also strongly opposed the Uniform Civil Court. Suppose there are some ten of the bill which will be affected our engineers people in our state. He already stated that is the one who will oppose the UCC. So, sir, now I understand the mind of the government, that the government of Meghalaya also is concerned about the uniform civil court. Thank you so much, and I hope that our Honorable Chief Minister, the Cabinet, his Cabinet, and also all of us, 60 members of the House, when the government of India is going to be implemented uniform civil code in our country, in that time, I hope that all of, all of us, we will stand together, we will fight together, and at that time, I hope that this August House will pass a resolution to oppose the Uniform Civil Court. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I beg to. So, uh, since the mover has withdrawn his resolution, now let me put the question before the House. The question is that the Honorable Mover has the leave of the House to withdraw the resolution. Those who are in, those who are in favor say aye. Aye. Those who are against say no. <coughs> the ayes have it. The ayes have it. And the resolution has been withdrawn with the leave of the House.